Hi, Ruby Lang. Welcome back to the Grovian Doll Museum. Today we're going to look at a, a program called Enchanted Rooms. Uh, over the last couple of days, I kind of lost track of what, what all the days are running together, we talked about doll houses. And in the program we mentioned doll rooms, being a typical uh, French and um, German uh, preference. But in, the, in our museum collection, we have a, a, room, a triple room box that actually has an American connection. Um, it's always wonderful to think, have things with a provenance. And this room box belonged to the DuPont family and the DuPont girls. Uh, the DuPont family, everybody knows what DuPont is. But what's interesting is, is it's an American company that was founded in 1802. So the room, box, room boxes we're going to look at are probably just prior to the Civil War. So by this period in time, the DuPont family was well set, very, very wealthy, wealthy enough to travel all over the world and buy anything they wanted. So one of the things they bought for their children was this triple room box that was played with by two girls. And it's filled, it's a treasure trove of rock and grinder furniture. And that's German furniture. And, um, but we believe that the whole German furniture imported to France and assembled in France, because most likely they would have been traveling, you know, they would have gone on the continent, but they would have spent a big part of their time in France. If you don't know what rock and grinder furniture is, which, you know, not everyone does, it's furniture that's made out of tin. So if we removed the faux grain paint finish underneath it, it would be tin and it would be finely crafted. It's very lightweight tin. Now, obviously they did not have rules of what you could give to a child at that period. And, and it can be sharp at in corners. And it is some of the most desirable dollhouse furniture uh, because I think that it was plentiful in its time but the, the finishes easily um, fall off with rough play, and then they become uh, not so attractive, and I think probably people just threw them out left and right. But the DuPont room boxes are a perfect example of luxury toys that belonged to people with means. They were the people that had the, the places to store an item, big, big attics, big basements that a, a piece could be packed away and wouldn't be seen for many, many years to come and really stay in perfect condition. And also they didn't have to share it with the next generation because the next generation would get all of their own toys. So I think we're going to take you to the grandest room in the room box, which is the phenomenal dining room. And this is just a fantastic room filled with wonderful things. But the, the rarest furniture piece, in my opinion, I mean, other people can disagree, but the rarest piece that I feel that's in the room is the banquet table, which you wouldn't even see it because it has a banquet cloth on it. But it is a rock and grinder banquet table. And that is quite large. And it's got a set, you know, it's original set of six chairs. Oops too much caffeine today. And what's also interesting is that this house has lots of pairs. So here's a pair of china cabinets, and there's a sideboard, also known as a buffet in the back, another cupboard to hide your valuables because silverware and things like that were very valuable at the time. Phenomenal electric blue wallpaper. Um, you know, the, at this period in time, they loved color. So this was bright and vibrant, matching uh, mirrors, original, of course, original, and a darling little corner whatnot um, in the corner. Just really, really a super piece. And then a pair of plinths on each side that would probably, really probably have plants in them in the window, but right now they have cakes. Just a real super thing. 
And then I want you to also see these are sensational. These valence boxes. And they're carved wood with plaster of Paris. Sometimes you see those with, made out of metal, you know, like armalu, gold-plated uh, metals. But to have those survive with the original curtains is amazing. When you consider all that you have to do that, and they come right off, so they could have easily been lost. But again, a wealthy family had the um, facilities to keep something like this intact. The one thing that they did lose is they lost all of their silverware. So we have no silverware, but at some point we will replace that. But the really triumph of the whole dining room is the food. The food is some of the most sensational food, original dollhouse food that I have ever seen. Like there's a stuffed salmon with shrimp and aspic. And I would imagine that's a lamb shank on the center. And then all of the wonderful desserts over here that are just too delicious. And then of course in the corner cabinet you have a beautiful arrangement of fruit. And remember in the, the 19th century hospitality was was key and you were if you were a wealthy family you had to plan to have guests drop in at any time so that you always had to have uh, coffees teas uh, refreshments available and speaking of refreshments this wine cooler here is so incredibly rare it's just a super duper piece and they do have a settee in the room that matches the, the chairs. Um, kind of an unusual thing to have in a dining room. But remember, dining rooms um, would be emptied of their furniture in the center of the room, and they could easily become a ballroom. And the DuPont girls would have to learn all this and know all this. And then I do also love the scored floor where they have this almost like a parquet finish in the floor. But again, this is all the original wallpaper, trimmings, really nothing has been done to this piece. But And, and of course the dolls are just wonderful dolls. Um, the dolls we have added because it came with no dolls. So we picked dolls that had a nice color or were, were you know, looked attractive in the room. I think we should now go on to the to the ladies' parlor. And the reason we call this the ladies' parlor is because there's lots of lady things in the room. If you notice on the sofa, they've got some knitting that they've put down, um, lovely uh, soft drapes. Uh, but what's really wonderful about this set of Rock and Grinder furniture is it's all upholstered. It has a, a, a crimson colored upholstery. It's the original upholstery. And sometimes you see this upholstered. You also see it with painted. Both are correct because if you remember in the dining room, it's all painted. Again, they've got whatnot shelves. And I can just see these little girls in Paris adding things to the room because all of the little uh, statuary, the little figurines, are called Old Paris or Paris Porcelain. So it's really kind of special. There are a couple of portraits on the wall and those very well could be members of the DuPont family from long, long ago. I would imagine if we went to Delaware, we could go to Winterthur and find that out if they were or not. And of course, look at the ladies desk here with the uh, serpents or I guess it's a sea monster, or maybe a dolphin um, legs. And, and then if we can pan back a little bit, you can see that this, this piece, they reflect each other, even though they're, they're not a pair. It's just kind of really sensational. And the nice thing about this um, set, and if you wanted to recreate this yourself, you could do this because you can find on uh, various shops and also on Ruby Lane, there are rock and grinder pieces. 
that are you know available they are in the upper end of the price range of dollhouse furniture but what you want to look for if the main thing about this whole assemblage is everything is in the same condition same type of condition and that's what kind of helps you know that the pieces are original to each other and if it if they're not that's the goal that the collector should have when they're putting it together because you wouldn't want a very worn piece which can have a, a great charm next to a piece that's in mint condition these are all in the kind of same condition and um, they also have some although the lamp is not rock and grinder it's soft metal that was painted to work in the room it totally works and then there's a really darling little all original doll and then of course the um, tea set is again old Paris porcelain and when we say old Paris porcelain that's not a company called old Paris porcelain what it really means is um, French porcelains pre 1870 because there were so many um, uh, porcelain companies at that time making wonderful things um, and one thing that you can't see but I will point this out is the stained glass windows so these have wonderful uh, when you get the light going through it it just is an enchanting little room and then also too we talked at in fantastic about face screens and there's a miniature parlor face screen with the ruby red glass so just a very super piece and then this is an extra sewing table in the window that could be used for two things that could be um, the pieces could be taken off and open up it's a, a workstation so there'll be all kinds of sewing implements in there and look on the, the armchair at the table there's a, a really darling little parasol sitting right here right there um, when David was talking about dollhouses the other day he did say that you know the wonderful thing about this part of the hobby is that you can go to a doll show or go on to Ruby Lane and find a little tiny treasure that is just perfect for what you're doing and you know it doesn't break the bank it's still fun and you can find something something to uh, to in that you enjoy and that's what's so fun about collecting dollhouses and room boxes and miniatures. I think now we should go to the children's room. And this is a darling little room with a set of twin beds. Now I will tell you that I have been dissatisfied with the bed covering. And then it wasn't until today when I was thinking about that I had to talk about this that I realized you know, I want to see silks and things like that in the beds. But then if you look in the beds, they're babies. So this is a very grand room box, but that's also very practical because, you know, you could have the little babies piddling their, their piddling themselves. And at that period, they didn't wear pampers. You put real diapers made out of cloth. So it's actually very practical now the baby cradle that's a whole different thing that is meant to show off not necessarily be utilitarian but to show off the beautiful baby that was just born to your friends and at christenings um, the baby probably would not be in that at all times and that would be part of the lifestyle that the duponts would have in 1860 and also to remember, most babies died in, in infancy. So, you know, a baby was a pretty special thing. And again, here you can see we've got the stained glass windows throughout. And this one piece here, the um, dressing table, that's where you can see it's the one piece that has wear on it. And I'm going to tell you about the wear on that piece. That happened for one reason and one reason only. Uh, a lot of miniaturists use miniature waxes to hold the miniatures down. Rock and Grinder is not furniture that you do that because when you put the sticky stuff on and you pull the item off, 
you take the paint off of it. So don't do that with this type of, I do a lot of sticking with, um, you know, getting things um, secured down, but not on, not on rock and grinder uh, furniture. That is a bad, bad thing. And here, look at this beautiful chair with the tufted seat. And this was all absolutely working, um, totally working furniture that you can open it. And of course you have a chamber pot near the bed that's very beautiful that matches the wallpaper. And then you also have a potty chair. Uh, those potty chairs, by the way, without the guard on them, you would have a potty chair, full-size potty chair in a uh, an adult's, um, you know, an adult's room because they didn't have indoor plumbing at that time. Some people did, but it was still very, very new. But this is a gorgeous piece. I'm going to set this down because this is a gorgeous piece, and I hope I can get it open. This is called a secretaire à baton. And it was just a wonderful piece of furniture um, that, you know, very, very, even though this is German-made uh, furniture, this is a very much a, a French design and just a super, super piece. And we can also tell the religion of the DuPont family. You know, they were of French origin. So in the bedroom, you've got your portrait of Jesus uh, looking over the children. And then a lot of the um, a lot of the gold accessories in in the rooms are Earnhardt Earnhardt Sohn, which um, you know is a fabulous company that made beautiful beautiful things. So I'm going to let Rachel do one more pan through this, so that you really get to see all the goodies and all the pretties. And of course the carpets are also really wonderful too. All of them made really with a lot, a lot of devotion. And all the borders are just very, very simple and lovely. And of course you have some Earnhardt and so on pictures on the wall. And some unusual ones in here. And then a really wonderful asphaltium mirror on the wall. And this is actually too, this is quite a large room box. Most of them are not this large. They're quite a bit smaller. And this did have, it still has underneath it, it's raised up. It did have a, uh, what we call a nursery stand. So this would have gone on a stand specifically made for it, and it would have been played in a, in a nursery. They could also take this out on a nice day and play with it outside. That was a pretty common thing that they did. And one thing that the DuPont girls had to learn with this is they had to learn housekeeping, and not in the sense of cleaning a house like you would have a housekeeper today do, but really running a house. So they would have really kept this very, very tidy. And, um, you know, probably if they abused the things, even being wealthy, they wouldn't get another one. So I'm very happy that uh, Ruby Lane was here today and had a look at the uh, Enchanted Rooms. I hope they enchanted you. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.